It's your time, man. I put you on fast track, and uh, we got you up and chooching here. So Marcos originally started out as a fat boy, power supply, and um, boy, he kept blowing up bridges, them little 50 amp, 1,000 volt bridges. And so he sent it up to me, and he kept the transformers that were in it, the little 50 amp transformers, and he came up and he had me uh, sent this up to me as an empty case originally. And he had me put one of the EPD um, transformers in here, one of the 100 amp ICAS transformers, you know, International Commercial Amateur Service Standard, which uh, works out to be like 30 or 40% duty cycle transformers. Had me put one of these in there. Now, Peter down there at EPD so over designs these things that uh, we can easily run a 2x8 off of just one of these. Okay, so this is what it's rated for. So each one of these transformers is rated for, but they can easily support something much, much bigger, much, much bigger. So he's been running a two by eight off of this and I had stud diodes I built up on here. There's another video of the same exact cabinet out there floating around that I did probably about a year ago. And so he says to me, man, I got Mission Impossible for you. And I'm like, oh yeah? Because I want you to turn this into a 400 amp supply. And I said, I can build you a 400 amp issue supply in that small of a cabinet, and that's what we did. So I stacked in another transformer. Now, this case has been through so many different iterations. If you flip this cabinet over and you look at the bottom of it, it's like Swiss cheese. <laughs> Shit's been moved all around in here so many times. So, Marcos, if we go and we do anything else to this cabinet, which we're out of room and we're out of growth, so we're going to end up taking the parts out, we'll put them in something else. Um, we have to, the cabinet is, uh, it's not junk by any means, but the floor on it has got a lot of holes in it. We'll put it to you like that. So with that all out of the way, I am now using these 200 amp continuous duty rectification bridges on the inside. And these are about the size of my fist. And they're metal plated on the bottom preheat sink and they don't seem to sag, they don't seem to get hot, they don't have any leakage. And they sure run a whole lot smoother than um, the little tiny cheap $4 units. Each one of these is about a hundred and some dollars a piece. But um, yeah, we go much bigger than this dude, we're gonna have to go back to using studs. But this is the only way I can make all of this fit inside of here. So anywho, um, the other thing that you had a question about is you always thought that there was a high and a low. Well, if we look at our little chart here, white, yellow, it's 110 volts, white, black, 120, white, red, 130, okay? So the white wire being your standard is what your ground is, Marcos. So if you go and you hook up your black wire, you're running on the mid tap of the primary side, which is the 220 on the input voltage. Now we all know if we change the primary input, the output voltage will either go up or down depending on the tap on the transformer. Okay. With that being said, a low tap would be your red wire, and you're going to tie that in over here on your breaker. So you take this red wire, you hook it up, and that is going to be a low tap. All right? So it's planning for a lower input voltage on the primary, which thus versely on the output side on your secondary tap is going to mean that you have a lower output. All right. <clears throat> the reason I bring up the ICAS standard is because I have made the mistake in videos in the past where I have told people that this was a CCS or continuous duty cycle. It is not. This is the International Commercial Amateur Service, which works out to be 30 to 40 percent duty cycle. CCS means continuous, so that means that you can put a 100 amp load on this and leave it. But we don't work like that in the land of radio. It's Key, talk, 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 listen, 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 key, talk, talk, listen, 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 listen. You have to take all those things into consideration when building a power supply. The core of the transformer will actually heat up, and when it does, when you start to have heat, you start to have breakdown, and you start to lose thermal control of the transformer, and the voltages that take place on the inside start to come apart. Well, like I said, this is way, way over designed. I mean, Christ, the lugs that come out of this thing are as big as my finger easily you're going to be able to put 400 amps of load on this. But Marcos, if you want to roll, run lower in voltage, 
So right now when we turn this on, we pop up to about 19.8. Here's 19.8 and these are hooked right on the back. 19.8 volts, 19.8 volts. You wanna to go to the low tap, that'll drop to about 18 or 17 volts float. Underneath the load, it'll drop to about 13 volts or so. If you wanna to go to the high tap, which is the yellow wire, which is this wire right here, you're gonna hook it up to your breaker over here right here okay that'll jump up and under load it'll be about 18 and a half volts we're gonna run on the mid tap today because Marcos you're gonna use a 16 pill now this is an amp that I've had for over a year it's been sitting here for been repaired for over a year it's got straight 16 transistors in it and we're gonna hit it with a, a two pill SRF 3662 box which I'm sure everybody that watches my videos has seen my video on that Two pill hitting a 16 pill, we're gonna see about 3,500 watts out of it. Um, just roughly short, about 1, 1,200 bird coming out of the out of the 16. But the whole idea is this is a load, and this is the closest to the situation that he's gonna have. He's gonna have a 16 pill and a driver attached to this unit. Now I have the driver hooked up to an external supply, my bench supply, and we're running at 14 volts. We're gonna hit it with a striker 955. And of course, as always, that's the bird meter that sits between the 955 and whatever I hook up here on the bench. Either the 2-pill or the 16-pill with the 2-pill off. We'll be looking at the input tune of the 16-pill, but we're not talking about that. We're not talking about this box that's going to be in a different video using this power supply. We're talking about Marcos' supply. He wants to know if he can make a 16-pill run off of this. Yes, you can. Yes, yes, you can. Anyhow, we're going to run on the mid tap and we're just going to demonstrate load for Marcos. So floating, we're at 16 volts, right? So now we're keyed. Hello. Hello. Thousand watt in the corner. Hello. We're only hitting out with about 80 watts. So our load on our 16 pill is not that heavy. There must be a thunderstorm going on out there. Oh yeah, it's raining right now. We've got 22 mile an hour winds. <laughs> a load on the power supply is not as aggressive as it's gonna be when we hit it with the two pill. Hello, audio. Hello, 17 volts. All right. So now I don't beat up my meter. I'm gonna put this down in 5X. So full deflection over there is 5,000 watts. Turn on a little two pill driver. getting in the mic. Hello, audio. Hello, in the corner. So there's a thousand bird. Hello, BBI. So we're looking right at 15.9, 15.8, 16 volts with a 16 pill. Nice and safe on the mid tap. You want more voltage, Marcos? Hook up the yellow wire. Low, medium, high. Low, medium, high. Okay? It's that simple. Mid tap, pull in probably 380 amps. Hello, BBI. Hello, BBI. Cruising. Cruising, just like that. Gentlemen, that's it. Marcos, I'm going to close this cabinet up. Your fans fit snugly, and I mean snugly, everything in here is built around fitting around the fans. They're gonna blow right down on these bridges, and from all of my testing I've done, I can't even get those hot, so <laughs> it's what it is. Hope you enjoy it, man. I will get with you in a day or so, and we're gonna figure out how we're gonna get it to you. This thing weighs a ton, so I'm a little weary to ship it, because the cabinets are so fragile when you put heavy weight in this. They always, always blow out the bottom of the cabinet and bow it out, so. We'll see. We'll talk about how you want to ship it. Anyhow, gentlemen, my name is BBI. Without a shadow of a doubt, I am the biggest mud duck in Idaho. Come check us out, www.bbiamps.com. That's where all my prices and everything are for what I do over here. Or just pick up the phone and give me a call. Find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. Guys, I appreciate you. I'm over here having the time of my life. I'm building my ass off and I'm doing everything I can. I know I'm super behind. I apologize to everybody. 
I'm doing everything I can just to keep my head above the water. Appreciate your patience. We'll see you guys.